Yellowstone supervolcano latest, shock as 94 earthquakes rock the National Park last month. It's about 100 earthquakes. Sean Martin, Express UK reports. Yellowstone supervolcano sitting at the National Park in Wyoming, bordering Montana and Idaho, hit by almost 100 earthquakes in the past month, and leading to theories that perhaps the massive supervolcano caldera is about to become active, to blow, that is. It's been seismically active, and the best part of 100 tremors in 28 days will only raise fears. In total, 94 quakes hit the National Park in Wyoming, and it prompted experts to keep an eye on the area. All of the quakes have been pretty small, the largest registering at a magnitude 2.4 on the Richter scale, one coming only July 28, and then again on June 15. But some experts warn that sometimes the size of earthquakes is irrelevant, but the quantity of the earthquakes could be more of a forewarning. Now we're thinking about what's happening in Ridgecrest, of course, with all those thousands of earthquakes every day. Now, Portland State University geology professor emeritus Scott Burns said, the spate of small earthquakes around the volcano usually signifies that magma and gases underneath the surface are beginning to navigate their way to the surface. To they want to uh, exit. He said if you get swarms under a working volcano, the hypothesis is that the magma is moving up underneath there. Well, we know that Ridgecrest, putting that into effect for Ridgecrest, it's in the Kosovo volcanic field and right at the area where the, the earthquakes and the swarms are taking place. China Lake in the uh, naval base is where the geothermal plant is also to be found. And we know that even in, um, in the area of uh, the geysers in California, where there's the largest geothermal plant in the world, we have had an uptick of earthquakes ever since that plant had started working. An uptick of earthquakes in frequency and in the size, the intensity of the earthquakes. And this is uh, also what's happening in the Ridgecrest area. So he says if you get swarms under a working volcano, the hypothesis is that the magma is moving up underneath there. But others disagree about whether the earthquake swarm near a volcano could be a sign of things to come. Jamie Farrell at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City believes that it's just part of the natural everyday cycle, everyday activity for Yellowstone. And she says earthquakes swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. There is no indication that this swarm is related to magma moving through the shallow crust. The, this uh, Wyoming volcano, the supervolcano, if it were to erupt, an estimated 87,000 people would be uh, done away with immediately. Two-thirds of the United States would immediately be made uninhabitable. We're talking about a super eruption, of course. The large spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out sunlight and directly affect the life underneath, creating a volcanic winter or what they say is a nuclear winter. The massive eruption could be a staggering, staggering 6,000 times as powerful as what we saw in Washington State with Saint, uh, Mount St. Helens in 1980, which deposited ash in 11 different states and five Canadian provinces. And if Yellowstone supervolcano does explode, the climate shift would ensue as the volcano would spew massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, which can form a sulfur aerosol that reflects and absorbs light. Here, of course, they're talking about super, super, super eruption. Now, we know that Yellowstone erupted three times recently in the past, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 640,000 years ago. Those were the super eruptions. Actually, the last time the super eruption took place, it took place about 150,000 years apart were two eruptions together, 150,000 years apart. Then there was another one which was a major eruption 70,000 years ago, 
Uh, recently, they had said that there was another one that was 130,000 years ago. Ever since a 70,000 year ago eruption, we've had 80 eruptions since then, which were minor. And um, they say that we could be overdue for a smaller eruption. Uh, and as Dr. Michio Kaku says, there's a Godzilla under Yellowstone, and it's uh, not going to be good if Yellowstone ever wakes up. Now, tying that in to what is happening in Southern California with the Ridgecrest earthquakes, exactly 20 years ago, in 1999, they had a magnitude 7.1 earthquake in that area, in Southern California, and a couple of weeks later, it caused a quake swarm to take place in Yellowstone. Uh, that's not the only time they had the Yellowstone had a quake storm. Uh, it also had a quake storm, a swarm from uh, the Denali, Alaska earthquake. It also had a quake swarm after the Haiti earthquake, and it also had a quake swarm after the magnitude 8.8 Chile earthquake. So it takes a little bit of time, but it could affect Yellowstone. Here we are at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This is the uh, monitoring of the earthquakes. And here we have, within this screen that we have here, a total of 131 earthquakes for the past month. Um, this is a quake swarm here around the lower geyser basin. This is the Yellowstone lake over the caldera and this is the outline of the caldera as you can see here right there let's go down a little bit so you can see it a little bit more of the map we can see the legend okay this is the last two hours the darker orange the last two days and the yellow is the last two weeks this is where we have our Oh, camera. Oh, I don't know if you will be able to see it. There we go. Yellowstone Lake. Another one here. Old Faithful. There we are. I haven't seen Old Faithful for days. For days, I don't know what's happening. But uh, that's the Biscuit Basin. And. This one is on the 15th, 2.4. Now we have, basically, you can see the activity here, 131 quakes. They're all listed here on this side, as you can see. And uh, as we said, no, not that, sorry. Oh, this is the uh, tilt, okay, Th this shows you the displacement. Monitoring station shows you the displacement. And what's happening as far as deformation is concerned. Uh, here, here as well. Do we have? Not that much there. A lot more on this side. Uh, this seems to be deflating on this, this area. And let's see if we can go. That's pretty steady. Let's go here. Uh, okay, you see a little bit of a little bit of displacement. That one there seems to be seasonal, but it's going up. It's inflating. Uh, shall we go here? Where was the one that we saw that was really inflating? Well, this has a lot of movement here. North to south, east to west. And shall we go? Yeah, we see a lot more movement, it seems, on the northwest area. Northwest. Shall we go here? Okay. Do we see this? That's pretty steady. Let's pull out now. We can have more of the uh, larger quakes towards the 
this is the edge of the boundary of the park. This is the boundary of the park. It doesn't mean that it's the boundary of the volcano. Okay, let's pull out again. And this was a big one on the 14th, four magnitude. But we have swarms here because of the fact that they have mines, and a lot of the mines there mine sapphires, the precious stones of sapphires, sapphire mines. And uh, you have other mines, mines as well with the other uh, precious gems. But this is basically um, a lot of activity having to do with mining there. And it doesn't seem to give us any more other earthquakes. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.